Californian quilt artist Kina Dorsey has made a lovely quilt out of the most striking African fabrics. You won't believe the combinations that she's created here on Artist Stories. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Walton and welcome to Artist Stories. Today I'm talking to quilt maker Kina Dorsey, who's in California, USA, and she's going to show us a beautiful quilt made with lovely African themed fabrics. So welcome, Kina. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I love the background that, um, of your studio, all that purple. It's beautiful. My favorite color. This great quilt, Starry Nights in Nigeria. Would you like to tell me where you got your inspiration? Although I suspect it's pretty obvious. <laughs> sure. So I got the inspiration basically because I wanted to use African wax prints or Ankara wax prints. And I wanted to be able to make a simple, elegant quilt that just really showcases those beautiful large scale prints and live in this color pilot of purple. And so what better way to do it than to make these wonderful sort of different assortment of prints and then find beautiful fabrics to be able to highlight them. So that was basically the inspiration. I just wanted to highlight these African prints with my favorite color purple. You, you mentioned wax prints. What do you mean by wax prints? African wax prints, or they're also known as Ankara prints, are an African 100% cottons. They're printed like batiks. So sometimes they're also referred to as African batiks, but they're called wax because of the process they're used um, to print and they use wax to batik or to create the, the prints. Sometimes they're called Dutch prints, sometimes they're called Ankaras. So that's what I use. They're regional to different parts of Africa. So these prints I bought or I ordered from Nigeria. And so hence the name in Nigeria. So I wanted to give homage to the places where I purchased the prints. Right. They're amazingly vibrant, aren't they? They're so vibrant. So that is the wonderful thing about these African wax prints. They're beautiful. They're mainly used for fashion. They're used a lot in fashion in different parts of Africa, but because they are 100% cotton and they're so vibrant and the scale is just so bold and so beautiful, they're attractive to quilters, right? But the challenge becomes a lot of times the rotation in these prints don't repeat. So the repeats are the, the designs and the prints are so unique and so vibrant that a lot of times quilters are a little bit intimidated to use them. So you have to get creative. So you either dig in and use them or you fussy cut them or you showcase them in large blocks. So this color pilot, I decided the green, the purple, and the yellow, and the blue, but the dominant colors as you see are blue and purple. And it works because those are next to each other on the color scale. So for this particular quilt, I went with this color pilot, but on any given day, it could have been reds and oranges or anything else. Very brave to use those fabrics together. It's just, if you looked at them together in a store, you would never put them together, but I just love them the way that you've got them. <laughs> So did you order them online? Yeah, so I ordered these online. We do have, I do have a local shop in downtown LA that I buy a lot of my fabrics from. But in the recent couple of years, and especially due to the pandemic, and when I used to travel a lot, I, I used to live in New York City for 18, almost 20 years. And there are lots of African fabric stores in New York, like in Brooklyn and Harlem. But when I moved out to LA, there's a couple stores that I go to, but over the last couple of years, and especially during the pandemic, I had to look for resources to, to buy online. 
And I found some wonderful online African fabric stores. And this one, this particular online store, they're amazing because not only are they focused toward African fabric, they are focused towards quilting with African fabrics. So I love this store because they made pre-cuts, jelly rolls, and fat quarters and layer cakes and charm packs. And they're really good at finding fabrics that quilters would be really attractive to quilters to be able to use in quilts. So I actually, this came from a mystery pack. So you just pick your color pilot and they throw in like this quarter, this fat quarter pack is what these came from. So she did the work for me. So I ordered a blue one. I ordered a green one. I ordered a gold one, a pink one. And then I just picked from those fat quarters. And the link to this store and a couple of other stores that are in the US down below in the description box. So if you're interested in African fabrics, please check out the stores. So let's get on to the technique. Now, this is a classical quilting technique, isn't it? Yes, so easy, so classic. You could make without a pattern if you understand this classic block. So what you see here, in addition, I have to say, I also used organic quilting cotton for the background fabric. Mm -hmm. The purple, the lavender is, I believe it's a window solid. And what I did was I made half square triangles using the African fabrics and the solid purple. So I just made four and a half inch strips of each assortment of prints. And then I cut those into four and a half strips. And then those strips I cut into squares. And then I did the same thing with the purples, each different print I made into a block of the stars. And then what you do is you get right sides together and you mark from corner to corner where your, where your center is. And then you just sew a quarter inch on each side of the um, block. And it's so easy. You just chain piece them. You don't even have to lift the needle. And before you know it, you have all of these blocks. And then once you do that, you just cut right down where that marked line is. And then it creates your half square triangles. And there you go. And it looks like that. And then you just press them to one side so that they lay flat. And I have a little wool mat that I love because it just really gets it nice and flat. And you just press them open there. And then you have your half square triangles. Each one produces two. And then you just arrange them in this order. And that gives us our little sort of star or windmill. Now that I have pieced the windmill or star blocks, however you want to call them together, I begin to work on the inner border, which I strips, four and a half strips or however many left that I didn't cut into the squares. And I'm sewing those strips together. I just kind of change up the order to make it seem a little bit random, but I take maybe about three or four strips and sew them together and just pair them in triples and sew them together. And that's what's happening there. And then I sew those to make these blocks that you see on the inner border there. I don't want the repeats to be exactly the same. So I just cut them and randomly piece them together with a set of another unit of three strips and then just sew those together and then throw some random ones in there every once in a while so that it looks <laughs> more organic even though it's planned and the little center of those windmills is that that white of fabric that's creating a secondary pattern as well exactly so there's now you start to see the secondary pattern happening there so what that's with the black and white prints and and then what you on the outside is me just auditioning and playing with what I want the outer border to be. On one end, you have that really vibrant, swirly purple. And then on the other side is the purple sort of floral, just the floral. So I was going back and forth 
either one of those could have worked since there's purple and blue, yep. but I decided to go with the really graphic purple one because I felt like <laughs> I wanted it to be really bold and I wanted it to really accentuate the purple solid in the center. And then I also liked that it had the white in it since that secondary windmill or half square triangles was framing that center block. And so I figured that white would show up there. And so that's the finished piece. So then we move to the next stage and I like to work on the floor. I actually piece together the backing fabric and it's a small quilt. It's only 45 and a half by 45 and a half. I use 80 cotton batting in there. So I decided to do some swirls and pebbles on that background. So with all of that wonderful negative space, I wanted to really just give the effect of the windmills, like the wind, something yeah. that would be more sort of a whimsical design. So I did the sort of concentric circles or swirls, however you want to call them, along with pebbles inside the purple. And then I did a little bit of ruler work on the actual points and then on alternating ones, I did pebbles. So that was fun and it went really quickly. I just did the straight lines on the inside to just have a little bit of contrast with the swirly to add the straight lines in there. I use superior thread. I think Fantastico is the line with superior threads. It's a lovely variegated polyester thread. Mm -hmm. And this is new for me because Prior to two years ago, I would have never touched polyester threads. It had to be cotton or rayon. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would piece with a cotton covered polyester. But as of lately, the threads are just, oh my gosh, the quilting threads have, the technology of those have really expanded and they don't shred or rip your fabrics or too harsh for your machine or lint up. They used to, I loved quilting with these threads and they, in the school, they tell you what needle to yep. use. Great idea. So it was, it was, I just followed the suggestions for that thread. So I used the 9014 and I also bare thread in the bobber. I didn't want any issues or tension. And so it was a lot of fun. You can see it's a nice, it's not too much. It's not extreme, but it's just enough to blend and give shadows yeah. and highlights. So that's the thread that I use. So here, here's the quilt and, before it's finished. Um, Almost finished, I did the square spirals on the, the inner borders for those squares. And then on the outer, I did ribbon. Uh, some people call them ribbon candy. So yep. it's just on the outer borders. And those will blend in more because the prints, I didn't really want to do a lot of detailed quilting, just enough to give texture because those, as you see, those pr prints, nobody's yeah. really going to see those stitches. <laughs> so this project is great for beginner quilters, intermediate quilters, and advanced quilters. But I say the reason beginner quilters would be attracted to this because the piecing is so easy. The pattern is so easy. Like I said earlier, you could look at this and just figure out the arrangement, although I know a pattern would be helpful. You don't have to necessarily worry about matching points. It looks like you have, and if you look closely, some of my points in my half square, when I squared them, they might be off like an eighth or whatever, and it's okay. <laughs> yes. So it's really easy in that way. So if you're not really a free motion quilter yet, you could do straight line quilting or stitch in the ditch right. um, or some meander or something. You could even do echo quilting and it would look beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you could just kind of echo that in initial pattern in those negative space and the results would just really punch up. Although I love working with African fabric, you could use any fabrics that have like designers that have really like tulip pink or coffee, any sort of really large scale. And then you would have the same effect and it would look, the, the pattern would look more difficult because you're just really playing with the fabrics and learning, working on your piecing and your chain piecing and your cutting. 
Now for intermediate and quilters, if you are free motion, you could do all kinds of, you can get really creative with those quilting designs in that negative space. So you could do feathers or you could do ruler work, or you could do custom quilting, any sort of all over design you could do. And it's also the modern quilt. It's if you want to just focus on technique and just do something really simple and classic, this is great. Or say you've just come off a really busy, intense, labor intensive project. And sometimes you just want to recalibrate before you go to the next project. You want to have that nice, easy thing to free yourself up to clean your palette. This is why it's great. It's a great in-between project to just wind down from the last project and get ready as you can be mindless and think about the next project. So that's how I think about it. Okay. This is your, your binding fabric? Yeah. And so for the binding, what I did was I pieced together some black and white Ankara fabrics. So these are also African prints and it's about five or six different prints. Okay. And so it's, yeah, it's not the same. It's not the one continuous same uh, fabric. So I pieced together five different similar prints and made the binding. And I use two and a half inch strips and I fold them because I like to, I wanted it to be part of the quilt or just accentuate. And that's what binding does anyway, but I wanted it to be a little bit like obvious. I, I wanted it to be more of like part of the quilt as opposed to just the finishing. And there you see, there it is finished there. And the binding is thick. It's about maybe about half an inch. I sew my binding on to the back and I fold it to the front. So that's okay. the technique that I like to use. Right. Yeah, that makes sense a little bit thicker on the front. And so I sew it onto the back, fold it on over to the front, and then I top stitch it down with a matching thread. So no hand and stitching. There is the... <laughs> I'm a lazy quilter. I'm the lazy, let's find a way, do okay. it quick. <laughs> All right. Now you've been teaching online um, since the pandemic. And I have a nice shot here of your set up for teaching which is where you're sitting now so would you like to explain what you've got hanging over your um table there yeah so this is a partial view of my studio that is my workspace that you're looking there and over there is an overhead rig so that is my camera and the microphone. So that's the overhead shot camera and shot that I switched to whenever I am teaching. I can show more hands-on and it can zoom in and get a closer look at whatever, whatever it is we're doing in the class. What you can't see in that shot is I have two more cameras. So I have a multi-camera setup. So I have a wider shot yep. and then I have a, cl- a, a close-up shot. The, okay. so that's now, the I know, overhead I know we've only got you in a little screen here but would you like to just flip through between the the three cameras yeah so sure so this is an example so right now you're looking at me in my close-up so when I'm speaking to students and then I'll just so when I'm showing them something I can demonstrate here and then go to this view and then if I want them to see like a wider shot then I can address them there and kind of show if I'm holding something up and you want to see like a bigger view I can go to that shot so that's the three camera setup that I that's that, great that's on the other side <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's wonderful okay I'm just going to stop the screen sharing now yeah here we are back again with your front facing camera and my front facing camera. Yes, I love your technology, but that's also part of your day job as well, isn't it? You have a bit more experience in doing those sort of things than than us people that are desperately trying to work it out (laughs) as a completely new technique in this pandemic. So you are teaching and lecturing online? Yes, I am. And it's been really exciting. I launched my first online teaching over the summer. And so I did a combination of live online as well as on demand. 
So I believe you've got uh, plans for a new online class. Yes, I do. So I have currently I have two classes. So I also do portrait quilts is one of my specialty raw edge applique quilting. So I have an online class called Let's Make a Selfie Portrait Quilt. And although I did a live version of that, I did a, a combination of live that is on demand now and available. So you can find that information on my website or in the description. But a coming one of the reasons I was sharing this quilt that we discussed today is because I have a, a course coming up called Working with African Fabric or Quilting with African Fabric. The name of the class is called The Big, The Bold, and The Beautiful, Working with African Fabric. So I am working on that course. I'm shooting all the content for that now. So that'll be coming up to just demystify some of the fears and intimidations around working with African fabrics. And it's just great. Um, you get a chance to break all the quilting rules and make wonderful improv quilts and easy patterns like the one that I show to ease you into working with those fabrics and making them beautiful. All the links to Kina's website with her classes, etc., are all in the description box below. So please check them out. And I'm sure that people at all levels will be fascinated to learn more from you. So I'd like to thank you so much for, for your time today. I love your enthusiasm and vibrancy. You inspire me to get more bubbly. <laughs> So I look forward to seeing what you come up with in the future. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I hope that if you enjoyed this chat, then you might like to subscribe to the channel and uh, that way you'll be notified when I bring you more artist stories. So thanks for everything, Kina. It's been lovely to chat with you today. And thanks, everyone. And bye for now.